<laughs> very good. So over the last several years, I'm sure you've hit some inflection points um, in the business's growth. I know that one of those is you just raised a significant amount of capital to take your company to the next level. That's a big inflection point. Um, before that, what were some of the major inflection points that you saw in running your business that you know kind of it was an existent you know it was a it was a, it was a major step up you know in terms of driving the business forward? What, what did those, some of those look like for you? It's funny. I actually wouldn't call this last round an inflection point. Um, it's it's sort of a reinforcement point. Like I think that we 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 are on a path. We I think know what the path is now, and it's really about execution. And this is a finance that's sort of shoring up the company, giving us some security, um, allowing us to be more aggressive. But I, I wouldn't call it an inflection point uh, in terms of changing strategy or you know really dramatically changing the complexion of the company. Uh, but we have had our fair share of inflection points, for sure. Um, and those started a long time ago. Um, I think that the the first big, big inflection point was uh, the between two thousand, the end of 2003, beginning of 2004, where in 2003, we signed our first of a handful of pretty substantial licensing deals for the Genome Project uh, with AOL and Best Buy. And, um, and so had our first proof from a big customer that someone would pay for this. And shortly afterwards, we raised our first large round of institutional money, about $9 million with our Series B financing. And this was after spending you know, four years or so basically broke, um, not taking salary and going through a really difficult period. And 2004, uh, we kind of recapitalized the company. Uh, a few months later, hired a new CEO. I hired a guy named Joe Kennedy, who's been fabulous. And the company just got completely revisioned under his leadership uh, in 2004. And that's when we pointed the company in a whole new business direction into Pandora uh, being a radio service. So that was um, the first big inflection point. Uh, I've been struggling for a long time. I, I kind of think of that as the second chapter of the business. Um, and then... Uh, then in, in um, November of 2005, we had been Pandora had been live for about three, a uh, couple months, but as a paid service, as a subscription service. And it was in November of 05 that we launched it as a free service. And that was a, after a lot of you know hand wringing and trepidation, uh, we decided to go free. That was a huge inflection point for us, um, and uh, and raised some more financing. Uh, and the thing took off like a rocket ship uh, as soon as we did that. Um, and then I would say at, after that, uh, we've had sort of cultural inflection points as a company where I'm sure you've been through this, you know, where your company's getting bigger, your revenue's getting bigger, you're getting more well-known, uh, you're playing in a bigger arena, and uh, things change. Like you walk by somebody in the office and they, they work at Pandora and you've never met them. Right. <laughs> Right. Um, and uh, and I'd say like that cultural inflection point hit us um, then as well. Right. And uh, kind of maybe kind of late 2004. And oh, what I'm talking about the 2005, uh, 2006, um, when when Pandora was really starting to make some noise. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think at that point we all we really doubled down on our own company culture and you know, thinking about. How do we maintain who we are? How do we sort of cement our principles and, and prepare the company for a much bigger future? Um, and I think we're going through another inflection point now. Actually, yeah, maybe I re retract what I said earlier. And, and it's not it's not the financing itself that is the the marker. Right, right. It's it's that we uh, we actually recently resolved a big rates issue. Um, around the royalty fees that we pay for our music. Right. And it has essentially assured us that we'll be around. And we've spent two years un unsure about whether this was going to get resolved and we might have pulled a plug. And so I think this, in hindsight, will turn out to be a huge inflection point where we have long-term security, we know what our business model is, and I think we're in an incredibly uh, good strategic position in our marketplace now. So I think... Now we just you know slam the pedal to the floor. Yeah, and it's all about process and technology. I mean, now it's growth and it's just about execution. You nailed it earlier. Yeah. Uh, I read something interesting about your model. The the more your users listen, the more it costs. 
which, you know, is, is very interesting because, I mean, the economies of scale just don't, I mean, it does internally, but in terms of your, you know, what you need to pay out, it goes up with every hour that someone listens. Um, yeah, we, we love our listeners, but man, they're expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge that most companies don't have to deal with because typically yeah, the more volume you get, you get the right. economies that goes along with it. So uh, I'm sure that ruling in, in, on the royalty side was a huge, you know, huge help. Um, yeah, it, yeah it, it didn't solve the problem of you know, linear variable cost, but right. it, it did solve the, the sort of viability problem. Right. Well, you know, a few cents goes a long way when it comes to those royalties, yeah. I would imagine. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a fast nickel kind of a model. So 